you ever had that happen? How about this? Those are two problems that have the same essential cause. Let's talk about how to know if your clarinet needs repair. Let's also talk about what you can do to prevent the need for repair and also assess for yourself whether you can fix it. Let me tell you, first of all, my experience with the clarinet says, unless you know what you are doing, don't try to fix your clarinet on your own. Uh, it takes a little bit more than most of us have in our arsenal of general knowledge about the world. So now what you heard there right in the beginning was a problem with the bridge key. The bridge key is really important because it connects our left hand to our right hand. One of the ways that this oftentimes goes out of adjustment is when we put our clarinet together, and we can sometimes be a little bit less than elegant. So it's really important when we put our clarinet together, get the upper joint bridge key out of the way. Press this key here and get it up and then put it together. That way these keys won't hit and it will be as it was the last time you played it. Now, if it's not aligned properly, or sometimes it can't be aligned properly because it's completely out of adjustment. Oftentimes, when we have these problems, it means we just simply haven't put our clarinet together properly. Good news, bad news, right? Good news is we can put it together properly. The bad news is it's a little embarrassing. So we get that aligned just right. And what it does is it makes it so this this little key goes down when it's supposed to. That has limited application, quite honestly. I mean, the only time I notice that not being right is in the extreme altissimo when certain fingerings are being used, but most often it's about getting our one and one B flat to work. Uh, if we don't have this adjusted right, this key doesn't close all the way. And if that key doesn't close all the way, we don't get a B flat when we have our one and one fingering employed. Sounds like that. We don't want that. If I get this just in the right place, a beautiful, well-controlled one and one B flat comes out. This is representative of where my client is adjusted because to be adjusted properly, we need this key and this key to be closed. This one presses this one down. There should be no motion over here. No, nothing. If I adjust my clarinet just ever so slightly in the wrong place, what we'll find is motion here, which means this one's not closing all the way. So my one to one B flat will not work. Conversely, if I turn it the other way too much, this one will go down, but this one, you can actually see ever so slightly, this one is moving when I press this one down. So in order to get this friend to close all the way, I've got to press very, very hard, which is going to cause problems when we get to using our right hand, because this one will be preventing this key from being closed. So these three keys can be kind of closed without this one being closed, which puts a big leak right there and causes a big problem for F and below in the clarion register, B flat and below in the shallow mode register, but also causes a problem with our high D, which uses these two plus that one. So that's a real thing that we need to pay attention to, getting this, this key elevated when we put the instrument together to make sure that that adjustment remains intact all the time. It's an important one. I wouldn't call the one in one B flat a primary fingering that I use, but I do use it on occasion. And when I do need to use it, I really want it to work. That's an important thing. The opposite of that problem is if we have the bridge key 
aligned in a way that stops this guy from going down all the way. If that happens, our left hand feels good, but then as soon as we add any of our fingers with our right hand, you could actually feel this same key wiggling a little bit. If you feel that, or if you notice that your instrument gets a little weird when you're using your right hand, that's an indication that your clarinet is either misaligned or needs adjustment. And what, what happens there is, you know, I'll just play a, a scale down from high C. You can hear that there's a little oomph. And what happens is I need to press down with my right hand harder than I should in order to get this one to close all the way. That's a bigger problem than my one and one not working. Because quite honestly, I can live without my one and one and I have, but this problem is pretty big. Uh, so that means the first thing I do is I just make sure that my clarinet, there is usually a spot where if I just move it just even a little bit, it alleviates that problem. That problem also is huge when it comes to playing a high D. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play a high D and I'm gonna squeeze this finger. You can hear how when I press it down hard, the high D comes out. If I'm not pressing it down hard, the note's stuffy, doesn't come out, or is has a strange pitch or a strange sound. That problem gets alleviated when we press more fingers down and they're, you know, we're just using brute force to fix that problem. But at least for me, brute force is not the best solution for any problem, much less this one. That's the number one thing that I run into that occasionally causes a problem. So I'm gonna readjust that just right. And I can feel when I have this pressed down and I press down my right hand, I don't feel any motion in that key. And then when I have them all pressed down and I lift my middle finger up, I can't, it doesn't, this key doesn't move. That's an indicator that everything works out like it's supposed to. Let's see if it does. Way better. So that is one thing that can oftentimes, if we're not aware of it, lead us into a, a moment in our practice where we work on a read that we don't need to work on, or we change mouthpieces, or we do any sort of corrective measure that is completely missing the point. You don't want to do that. The next thing that can cause us a problem, and this is kind of in a certain way seasonal, as weird as that is, is this screw and these two pads. Now what happens here is that this pad can swell up. And if this pad swells up, you'll notice that the A flat key curves around it. And that lifts the A, the A flat key up so it's not covering the tone hole all the way. I'll show you how it might sound. kind of turns into the, the equivalent of having your register key open. But let's see what happens in the upper register. That's a problem. I'm gonna take my screwdriver. Everybody should have a screwdriver. We shouldn't use it a lot. We should make our screws, in case if one is backing itself out, which can happen, no big deal. You can screw it back in. But this particular screw is a particular case. I'm gonna back this screw out now, when I'm looking at my A key, you can see how the A flat key wraps around. And this screw, if it's all the way in, doesn't leave any room for swelling in the A pad. So I have that much movement in my A key. So in the event this does swell up, this key will still close. Because if it's lined up with no play in this key, Oftentimes, this can be leaking ever so slightly and causing us very huge problems. I backed this screw out, and what I feel is a little bit of space in between. So when I press the A key, I can feel a little bit of motion. And when that happens, my clarinet feels great. 
And there you have it. It's as simple as that. The problem isn't you. The problem isn't a pad. It's just a screw being turned a quarter of a turn. And that's something that you can absolutely do yourself. The things you should never do with your clarinet, in my experience, is bend a key or start trying to move a pad or something crazy like that. Because that's oftentimes going to lead you into a place where you're just amplifying and making a problem worse. And you're costing yourself money because when you go to the technician, they're going to have to do more work to undo the work you did on your clarinet. The third thing that can be a problem, I'm not going to be able to replicate exactly, but you'll see what I'm saying here. We want to be able to play a B or a C sharp with either hand. And you'll notice that underneath these keys, there's a lever attached to the C key. And now if that is adjustment isn't right, it's going to prevent the C key from closing all the way. And there'll be a little bit of what we would call play in the C key. And it would move a little bit and this pad would open and close. And then if you were playing a B with just one finger, either pinky, this hole doesn't close. And what you would hear would be a much different sound when you finger it with the C key down and the B. And sometimes we're gonna play that that way, but like in a key like D major, A major, E major, where we're we're going one pinky to one pinky from B to C sharp. Your clarinet's not going to be doing you any favors and you're not going to really be able to play those passages properly. So that needs to be an adjustment. If it's too far the other way, it prevents these two keys from being closed all the way. You know, again, as much as I love everybody that watches this channel, I'm not going to undo that on my clarinet because I've got no ability to put it back. So, I can't replicate it for you right now. Nope, my clarinet works well there. But the way to test it is to play a B and then move this finger on and off the key. Do it kind of hard in this situation so that you can really see if there's a problem. The, the, the left pinky will be light, the right pinky will come down with some force, just in this one instance, so that you can verify if there's anything that needs to be adjusted there. And same thing with the C sharp D flat key. Hold it down, play the note, wiggle this finger on and off the key, and then you'll be able to determine if that's a problem. Because if you're unaware that that's a problem and you're trying to finger through a D major scale, both B and C sharp need to work properly in order to have a nice smooth and forget smooth for, for the notes to even come out. So those are the three main things that I find to go wrong with my instrument. And when I teach students, that is also something that goes wrong with their instruments. And so often as you're learning the clarinet, unless you've been playing for a long time, it can be difficult to identify these particular problems. But now let's talk about more advanced problems. And this is where I, I just recently went to see my friend, Liam Burke at Liam Burke Custom Woodwinds here in New York City. Uh, Liam is a wonderful, well, first of all, he's a wonderful person, excellent player and very, very skilled expert uh, repair technician. You know, we had a conversation. Unfortunately, my phone battery was dead when I was there, so I didn't get it all on, on tape, but I wanna share some of the, the ideas that he has. He has also written some blog posts. I'm going to direct you to his website, some of the things that he's written, which are very, very smart. When you are at a level that is beyond a student clarinet, let's say if you have a wooden clarinet, you're playing something other than a plastic clarinet, there's a lot of variables that didn't exist before. The tone hole, I mean, if you're playing a plastic clarinet, the tone holes are always going to be the same. It's just the way they are. No one's going to work on, no one's going to actually adjust any of the tone holes. 
A lot of times when we buy a brand new clarinet, it can be frustrating because there, there's some detail work that still needs to be done. And oftentimes people wonder, including me, I just spent $6,000 on a clarinet and now I've got to get work done on it? Seriously? And yes, seriously. So when we look at these things, it's really, really important because there's going to be potential problems with the actual tone holes having some rough patches on them, which can create uh, tears in the pad. Spring tension should be adjusted so that they're all even. That's going to feel much better in your fingers. This clarinet needs repair. You can hear how loud it is. I, this clarinet is the one that Liam just worked on. It's beautiful. It's very quiet. The springs feel good. The whole thing is what I would say tight and it's sealing. The registers connect much, much easier. One of the things that I find when my clarinet needs work, oftentimes it's hard to tell the difference of whether I need to practice or my clarinet needs adjustment. When we first get to a clarinet technician, one of the things that can happen is we feel like, oh my God, I play so much better now. And it's true. There's some truth in that. And the truth is, yeah, your clarinet needs some work. There's never been a moment in my life where I feel like my clarinet couldn't use some work, except for right when I get home from the repair shop. The thing that becomes difficult is for me or anyone else who's not an expert to determine what the problem actually is. And any of these problems at this point, that are the three things that I talked about, one of which you can fix, the second you can twist around, find the right spot, the third of which you can't fix yourself. None of the more advanced problems are really fixable by somebody who's not a professional repair tech. One of the things that Liam suggests, and I wholeheartedly agree with him, is to do regular maintenance on the clarinet. That actually, in a certain way, keeps the cost down because you're not fixing any huge problems all at once, which pretty much means someone needs to take your entire clarinet apart and put it back together and fix multiple small problems. Because uh, the, the, there's a compounding effect with the small problems. It can be hard to determine what's the clarinet, what's you, and what's your read, what the mouthpiece, and on and on and on. A professional can help you identify those things and fix them for you. Liam does a pretty wonderful thing, which is offering a subscription service. Lots of things are going to subscription services these days. But this allows for regular appointments and regular repair that are sort of built in and there's incentive because you're paying every month a little bit of money to have access to this service. I'm gonna link Liam's information, things that he's written down in the description so you can you can read it yourself. I don't want to put words into his mouth or convey some you know things, but here's what I got from him. And, I, and I, these are things that I think are true, but he repeated them more eloquently than me, which is every time a clarinet comes into the shop, there's something slightly different that needs to be done. And it's hard to say it's gonna be this, 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 or this. We oftentimes as players think there must be a pad that's not seating right, which which could be. One of the one of the things that we can do as a check is to see if the clarinet is sealing. If you've watched my videos before, you have seen me check to see if the reed is sealing. That's important. Let's see if my reed is sealing. I, I plug up the end. I do this with one hand. I should show it with two hands. You plug up the end and the reed sealing. That's good news. Let's see if the clarinet is sealing. Most technicians have tools to see if the instrument is sealing, although they will all do this as well as a general check. You cover up one hole with your finger or your hand. I'm gonna use my hand because my hand's big and fat. And then we put our mouth over the barrel and we suck on it. And your lips should be held by the clarinet. And they are, this clarinet is sealing. Great news. Good job, Liam. 
Okay, and let's see if the right hand is sealing. Same thing, we just cover up all the holes with our fingers, cover up the lowest end. Sealing, good news. Like if you are fingering what would be a long B, if that's covering all the holes, when you do this, you should be able to let go of the, the pinky and it should stay down. I'm gonna show what, what might happen by lifting, if I lift a finger, simulating a leak. I'm actually just gonna put my finger on the hole most of the way, not all the way. I'll show you what happens. The key won't stay down. That means this is leaking. And if it's leaking, you gotta get someone to fix it because that's causing you a problem. Because we want all the holes to be closed all the way. But I want to leave you with one very cool thing you can do. If your clarinet's sealing, there's really no problems and you wanna do something that's gonna move the needle a little bit. We can remove our register key and clean out our register tube using a screwdriver and a pipe cleaner. We can also clean out our tone holes. Our tone holes can get very, very dirty. Uh, that happens just with nature because uh, we're in a, environments that have dust. But also it happens if you have been eating before you play. Don't do that, but it happens. Maybe you're drinking coffee. Uh, I do it. Uh, and that, that can get gunk in our tone holes. I'll show you how to clean that out right now. All right, so here we are looking at the register key of a clarinet. We've got a screwdriver. I'll link to a screwdriver down in the description so you can get one for yourself. The screw is over here on this end. I'm right-handed, so I need to do this with my right hand. We just unscrew. This one's easy. We unscrew it. So easy. Our register key is off, and we have access to our register tube. Just stick this in there. You can see it going on the inside. It's probably not bright enough light. My register tube is pretty clean. Oftentimes you'll do this, and you'll find a bunch of garbage in there. And it's never going to hurt to just do that. That's your pipe cleaner. And then you put your register key right back on. Try and do this in a place where no one's going to bump your stuff so you don't lose your screw. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend taking off too many of your clarinet keys unless you got a lot of time and a lot of confidence. Get that back in there. The keys that get the most dirty are the keys that tend to get the most spit in them. These, this one, that one. Um, but we can also fold this up a little bit and see if there's any garbage in here. Oh, yeah, a little bit. So all of our tone holes can get dirty. Yep. You can see there is some dirt on that. You know, and you can very easily just check out the tone holes that are available. You know, just get those cleaned out. That's never going to hurt anything. I do this with this dry. I don't think you should put anything on it. I think a professional might put something on it to help clean. And with wooden clarinets, the other thing that can happen is you can get cracks. And cracks are always a disappointment. This clarinet has multiple cracks that have been pinned so beautifully you can barely even see it. I'll try and take some close-up pictures of it. And the clarinets usually crack where there's lots of holes in the instrument. So the upper joint tends to crack more than the lower joint. Uh, it's a frustrating experience because that makes pads leak. That does, you know, does a lot of stuff. That's one of the reasons we keep our clarinets humidified. There's different opinions on whether we should oil our clarinet. 
and I am not going to venture into that right now. I do oil my own clarinet. I do it in a very specific way. You should have somebody show you how to do it before you try it yourself. There are some videos online that show how to do that. I'm going to suggest talk to a repair person. See if the person that's taking care of your clarinet suggests it. And if so, have them teach you how to do it. Uh, but we need to keep our wooden clarinets humidified with some type of humidifier. And I'll put some uh, humidifiers down in the description so that there's, there's multiple ways to do it. And there's multiple levels of severity, should we say, that it might need to be done. Because there's the standard sort of maintenance uh, humidification that needs to be done. But then there are times, and this has happened to me, where uh, my clarinet has gotten so dry that I need to take some very, very serious action. I'll make a, I'll make a separate video about that where I'm not talking about Liam because he did not tell me this and he might say it's a terrible idea, but I'll make another video about what I do in that situation. Those are the basics of knowing what you need to know about clarinet repair, what you can do, what you should not do, and when you need to find somebody professional to help you. That's all for now. Keep your clarinet in good shape. Take good care of your clarinet. Happy practicing. We'll see you next time.